Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us today on Google Hangout um, for a roundtable discussion on the Life After Pi article. I'm Robert. I'll be your moderator today. And joining me are um, Jeff Hout. Um, we're with the Product Management Group here at Digi. I'm Brandon Tugas. And I'm Kyle Borgerson. So, so ever since the Raspberry Pi was launched in late 2012 as an educational platform, there's been many competing boards from many different manufacturers. Some of these boards were even based on existing platforms. So Kyle, you want to talk about some of the boards you're going to be showing today? Yeah, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a couple of the uh, TI Launchpad and also some of the uh, BeagleBoard products. Um, go into uh, detail on uh, a couple of the features and uh, also uh, some other facts and uh, pros and cons on these boards. I'll be discussing free skills product line uh, with the Freedom Boards, the Tower Boards, and also going into uh, a little bit on the wand boards on the Autodom X6 product line. And I'll be talking about some of the Arduino platforms and the Shields and the Olam X uh, single board computers and their tech front. So Kyle, talk about some of the capabilities and expansion of these boards. So for starters, we have the um, TI Launchpad family of uh, development boards. Um, these allow you to get into TI's MSP430 family, um, which gives you the scalability throughout that entire family. Um, they also have different uh, capes that would, or no, I'm sorry, not capes, but uh, uh, booster packs that would go on and add different capabilities as far as GPS and different things like that. Now, the, uh, the BeagleBoard products, this is where I was talking about capes. You have uh, different capes as far as uh, similar capabilities expanding into um, GPS modules and other capabilities for the, uh, the, uh, on the baseboard. So, Brian, talk about some of the words. <clears throat> so, Freescale's uh, uh, the, the Freedom Platform is designed to um, plug into the Shields uh, ecosystem. So they're launched uh, with the, the Cortex M series product line from Freescale. Uh, the Kinetis, uh, this particular one is the Kinetis um, KL25 family. Uh, the, the tower system, uh, which is a platform all in itself, uh, this particular one's housing the Vibrid product line, uh, has the ability to expand on, on the tower series of products, uh, the shield or the, uh, the serial um, boards. As, long, as well as the uh, uh, plenty other different uh, expandable um, uh, tower systems. Also, the uh, for the IDOTM X6 product line, we have the wand board and the wandboard.org products, uh, the uh, the solo products, along with the base board as well. So Jeff, talk about some of yours. Okay. Uh, today I brought with uh, an Arduino Uno. Um, they have a wide variety of different peripherals, um, including their their uh, shields, uh, which you can expand Ethernet, uh, GSM, XB Wi-Fi, and uh, many other types of different uh, expand. And then uh, with the Olamex, um, they have Ethernet, USB, audio, video, and uh, IO scan expandability on theirs, as well as uh, UAXT modules that give you um, serial and some other spy devices. Some spy based devices. Um, with the Arduino platforms, they expand through shields, but you can also expand by, uh, you can program your IC on the Arduino board and then upscale it into your finished design. Very, very cool. So let's talk about some of the IDs that all these platforms use. Um, I guess I need to start Kyle. Sure. Uh, for the, uh, the BeagleBone products, we have the uh, Cloud9 IDE um, running BeagleScript or uh, phone script. Um, this would be something that's uh, pretty easy to do, get up and running. Um, 
they have a lot of support and uh, as far as just a blink and LED um, get you up and running on that platform. For the uh, the Launchpad products, you have the option of uh, Code Composer Studio with TI, or you also have um, TI's uh, Energia platform, which is running on the same type of uh, framework as the uh, Arduino software. Um, so if you're familiar with those, it's uh, very easy to get up and running. Right. So for Freescale, uh, both platforms, the Freedom and the Tower platform, are supported by Code Warrior. Um, that, that's downloadable off freescale.com. Um, and in, in this particular Freedom board, there's also a IDE that's supported by ARM called Embed, which is an online uh, compiler that you can utilize uh, with the uh, Embed-enabled products. Um, along for the right here is the, the uh, wand board products, and those support um, embedded Linux, so you can uh, download the embedded Linux ESP. And very interesting. Jeff? Um, with the Arduino, you you can use uh, the Android or Arduino sketchpad. And then with uh, ports like the Arduino Yun, you can use Linux or Android based uh, operating systems. And then moving on to the Olmex type ports, you can use the Android Linux. And then the with this one, it has uh, a Freescale micro on it, so you can use Core Warrior. Very cool. So let's talk about, you know, to get support for these boards or interact with other developers, where do you go? Well, start out with the, um, the Beagle products. You have uh, an extensive community on uh, beagleboard.org. Um, you're there you're going to find all sorts of uh, different support, getting started guides, um, some software tutorials, stuff like that. Um, for the Launchpad products, you're going to have, uh, again, a couple different uh, places. You're going to have uh, TI's E2E forum. They're going to have a, a separate section for the MSP430 product, um, as well as uh, our EE wiki. Um, we'll have different things as far as support and getting started, guys. Brandon? <clears throat> so, um, Freescale has an extensive community for both their tower tower platform, which is under Tower Geeks. Um, also, the Kinetis community supports all their Kinetis and, Free, and uh, Freedom boards. Um, great place to start uh, for getting started guides, uh, supported forums, tutorials, anything like that. Um, also, the the WAN board has their own supported community along with Freescale's IDMX community. Um, you can go to wandboard.org and check out their forums, as, lo as well as uh, freescale.com to uh, to check out the IDMX community, um, and as well as our EE wiki is um, also, and that's a great resource for any of the the platforms that Freescale offers. Cool. Well, Jeff, for Arduino, uh, or all things Arduino, you can go to arduino.com and check out their form, add a fruit or spark fun. Um, for Olamix, they have their own forum that you can go to to find the same information as the, the other product you see here. Very cool. Thank you guys for that informative stuff. Um, well, thank you guys for joining us on this talk. Um, if we have any questions from the field, these product managers would love to answer all your questions. Um, one of the questions that we have is, can I get the parts list and schematics for the boards? Sure. I'll let some of these guys answer them, but most of these open source projects, all the schematics and bombs are available on their respective community websites. And you just most of the time, you just download the whole bomb, bring it up in any of your IDE tools, or I mean your schematic editors, and just print it off and get all the parts directly from DigiKey. For example, like the uh, the BeagleBoard products, you can go to uh, BeagleBoard.org. Um, they will have the full you know, Gerber files, full schematics, uh, bombs, everything available as it is uh, an open open source uh, product. Uh, likewise, with the, the tower systems and the free to, uh, free Freedom Boards, uh, you can go to Freescale.com, go to their communities, uh, grab the uh, schematics, the, um, the the board files, anything that. Uh, that you're looking for. Um, also, eWiki, uh, we have uh, quite an extensive uh, knowledge base and group that we support on there and um, uh, upload that constantly. Very cool. Very cool. And, uh, 
Arduino.cc uh, has a lot of information, um, along with schematics and all the same information that these guys were talking about. Uh, There's many clones of it. Our EE wiki, I believe Rob has some uh, some information right on there about some of these OLMX boards and right on uh, uh, the OLMX website. Uh, do we have any more questions from the field? Uh, do I need to pay for an operating system for these boards? Well, it depends on some of the boards. A lot of these boards already run embedded Linux, so Unless you want to pay for support, you can download it yourself from Debian or Ubuntu or Android on it yourself. But some of the like the free scale boards, they require like MQX or or many other different OSs. I don't know if you guys want to expand on that a little bit or um yeah, I guess some of the things I had talked about with uh, like the Code Composer Studio that's free and downloadable from TI's website to get you uh, started on the product, as well as uh, for the the BeagleBone products as well. You can get uh, up and running on those IDEs for uh, for free. It's just uh, a download. Uh, as Rob alluded to, um, uh, the onboard.org products uh, they support embedded Linux, so you can go and um, you don't have to. Uh, essentially, pay for for embedded Linux. You can download that and uh, utilize that on the onboard products, on the AutoMX six products. Um, uh, as far as Freescale goes, they have they support their MQX uh, RTOS, and uh, that can be utilized on the Vibrant platform um, on this tower system. And uh, there are several other supported uh, third parties that uh, utilize RTOS um, for, for multiple platforms. Like we were talking about earlier, the, the specific types of Arduino, uh, like the Yun, specifically uses Android for the Arduino uh, style IDE. And then uh, the Olo exports, uh, this supports Codeware, Linux, Android, uh, a lot of different. Very interesting. Um, I forgot about these. Uh, Android or Arduino has a very good uh, form that supports all of their their different. Uh, <laughs> it shows all of the different IDs that you can use with this, along with uh, the Atmel uh, ID. Arduino ID. Um, so, is there any more questions from the field? Um. You touched on this a little bit, but one of the questions we have is where can we get detailed information on the boards? Sure. So all of these boards listed um, in the Life After Pi article are also available on our eWiki. Um, you click on your resources, it's um, it's a comparison of board spreadsheet where we list um, about 120 different boards all around the same price range, all different features. A bunch of I/O details, whether they have spy, USB, UARTs. Jeff just put a lot of effort into putting the whole thing together, and we thank you for that. And the, this is all attached to the Life After Pi article, also if you'd like to look into that. It's available, available to view. Right? It's all available now to use. Yeah. So um, low cost boards uh, on our eWiki. Go under uh, under our resources uh, tab and, and check that out. Um, and and along with all the other communities that we've mentioned before. Now, like they said, it's, uh, you know, you have a link right to Jeff's reference there at the uh, Life After Pi article. So it'd be digikey.com slash Life After Pi. Um, and I think we're going to be posting some resources as well on uh, a PowerPoint after this. So there'll be a couple of the different resources we talked about on there as well. Very cool, very cool. So is there any more questions from the field? We're good. Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us for this event, and I'm um, hoping it was informative for you. And everything will be provided at the end, so you can review it at any time. And just thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you.